astrology verily the door to religiousness i have spoken on certain aspects of astrology it is necessary that certain matters be understood first it is necessary to know that from a scientific point of view the entire solar family is born out of sun solar family includes the moon mars jupiter and all the other planets including earth these are all organic part of the sun slowly life on the earth came into being from planets to man man is an organic part of the earth and earth is an organic part of the sun it is like a mother who has a daughter who in turn also has a daughter and in all three of them have the same blood flow their bodies are made out of similar cells the scientists use a word empathy meaning shared sensitivity the those things that are born from the same source have a sort of shared inner experience when krishna said in bhagavad gita 4th chapter that first of all this knowledge i gave it to son it was a question of to believe it or not to believe it when something is proven scientifically there is no reason for us to act otherwise out of the sun earth is born because mil- millions of years ago earth was part of the sun and out of the earth our bodies are born and far away the sun is our great grandparent whatsoever happens on the sun creates a vibration in every cell of our bodies it must be that way because our cells are all born out of sun the sun appears to be a great distance away but it is not so far in every element of our blood and in every particle of our bones lives the atoms of the sun we are part of the sun so it is no wonder that our bodies are influenced by the sun there is a sort of empathy between sun and us as human beings if we understand this empathy rightly we can enter into a dimension of astrology i spoke to you about twins some ex- experiments or empathy can be conducted when twins born of the same egg are placed in separate rooms during the last 50 years many of these kinds of experiments have been conducted twins were born out of separate twins were put into separate rooms a bell was rung children were told to write or draw whatsoever they first thought of when the bell was rung this was repeated 20 times and it was observed with great wonder that 90% of the pictures drawn by the twins were seen the flow of thoughts produced in one child on ringing of the bell and the words of pictures brought about by that thought would be the same as in the other twin this similarity of experience is described by scientists as empathy there is so much similarity between twins that they vibrate alike within the bodies of the two children there is an inner communication or dialogue which flows through some unknown channels when there comes a synchronicity between two people maybe husband and wife maybe master and disciple something like this begins to happen a message is sent immediately it is received or sometimes it is received as a 
thought. Sometimes it is received as a message in dreams. The entire cosmos is like cyberspace. Whatsoever message is relayed, it remains there if it is for you. For instance, I relay a message relating to one of you. I broadcast it. It will remain in a spiritual cyber space as escrow for you or for all those who are at the same level of consciousness or vibrations. They can receive it and it will come to them as a strange but it does happen. And you know the process of decoding that message that yes, this message is for me. For instance, I will give you an example. During one of the talks, Sufi Omkarnath said, it was not addressed to me, that whenever God gives you an opportunity, always keep, continue to work like a department store. Department store is technically one where people can get the items of their needs. It is not a specific specialized store, but it is considered to be a common man's store. Everyone will get something or the other when you visit a supermarket. You may find this I may need. So this I felt that this matter, this message was for me. I started working on that. So something like that happens. There is much similarity between twins that they vibrate alike. When the bodies of the two such children, there is an inner communication or dialogue which flows through unknown channels in the same way between the earth and the sun. Also, there is a communication bridge like this. Every moment, messages are being passed across these bridges. And similarly, communication bridges exist between earth and man. So there is a continuous communication between man, the earth and the sun. But that communication is mysterious. It is inner. It is subtle. Let us try to understand something about this. There is a research center in America known as Three Ring Research Center. If you cut down a tree, you will find a number of rings or circles visible across the cut surface. The beautiful decorative design in the grains of the wood furniture are due to these circles. The research center has spent nearly 50 years working on the formation of these rings. Professor Douglas is the director of the center who has spent a major part of his life studying them, has discovered a number of facts. Ordinarily, all of us know that the age of tree can be calculated from number of such rings. Every year one new ring is grown and one new ring is made within the tree every year. If the tree is 50 years old, it has seen 50 autumns, then 50 rings have formed inside the tree. But it is surprising to know that these rings also include what sort of seasons there were in a particular year, if seasons were hotter or wetter than usual, the ring formation is of a different quality, it is broader. If the seasons were cold and dry, the rings are not so wide. Instead, they are somewhat narrow. If Buddha said there was a good ring fall in a particular year, the Bodhi tree under which he sat would confirm the truth of it. 
Buddha might have made a mistake, but the tree could not. The tree rings will be wider or thinner, indicating the type of season that particular year. While conducting his research, Professor Douglas reached still another conclusion which was far beyond anything he could have anticipated. He observed that the rings are wider every 11 years. This is a strange development. Every 11 years, there is maximum nuclear activity on the sun. The sun becomes more alive. It is as if sun has a periodic rhythm. Its radioactivity is then at its peak. During such a year, a tree makes a wider rings, not in one forest or in one place or country, but all over the earth. All trees behave similarly in order to protect themselves from intensified radioactivity. To protect itself from the excessive power that is being released by this sun, the tree grows a thicker skin every 11 years because you remember every year, every 11 years, the explosion takes place on the surface of the earth. Due to this phenomenon, scientists coined a new phrase called global climate. The seasons are different in different places. It will be raining in one place, cold in another and hot somewhere else. And the idea of there being a global climate has never existed before. So in referring to the effects of this 11th year, Professor Douglas coined the term global climate. And while we may not notice it, trees do. There is a gradual decrease in the width of the tree rings that are formed after the 11th year. And after five years, there is again a gradual increase in the width up to the 11th year. This continues to be, if the trees are so sensitive that they can carefully record an event happening on the sun, then is it not possible that in the minds of man there might also be some layers that man's body might have a subtle sensitivity to the activities taking place on the sun that creates ripples in the psyche. Until now scientists have not been able to clearly find any effect in man's body. Yet it seems possible that the body would not record such activity. Astrology is an investigation into the possibility that whatever is happening anywhere in the universe also affects man. And astrology is the entire science of this study. But it is not easy to investigate the body of man because it cannot be cut open like a tree. To cut open a human being is a very delicate and dangerous affair. And because man has a mind, it is not the body which registers events in this way, but the mind. The tree has no mind, just like a human being, so its body has to register the events. One more point is also worth noting. Just as there are radioactive storms on the sun every 11th year, there is similarly another periodic rhythm of 90 years on the sun. This has also come to light recently, but it is a scientific fact and it is as surprising as the periodic rhythm occurring every 11 years. 
Astrologers do not mention anything about this, but I am telling you to make it easier for you to understand astrology in a more scientific manner. There is a cycle of 90 years which has been experienced and its story is quite amazing. 4,000 years ago, an Egyptian told his scientists to keep a record of how often the water in the river Nile increases and decreases and by how much. The river Nile is the only river in the world with a biography 4,000 years old. A record has been kept of when the water level in the river increased or decreased by even an inch. This record runs from the time of Pharaoh's 4,000 years and this record is even kept now. Pharaoh is the name given to the Egyptian emperor and in Egyptian language the word means sun. There was a belief in Egypt that continuous dialogue exists between the sun and river Nile. The Pharaohs who were devoted to sun declared that a complete record of Nile should be kept, they said. We know nothing about the sun at present, but someday this record will be very useful in knowing something. So 4,000 years, everything about River Nile has been recorded. The increase in the water level, when there were floods and when there were none, and one Egyptian scholar this man compiled its history. Sometimes that were not known in the times of Pharaohs are now known. And everything that has happened in the Nile has been compared with the events on the sun. A 90 year rhythm clearly indicated to relate to the happenings of the sun. These events are quite similar to what we call birth and death. Understand it this way. The sun is youthful for 45 years and then begins to decline to age for 45 years. For 45 years, the energy flows within the sun, increases towards a peak of youth, and after 45 years, there is a receding flow of energy as within a human being. This makes a 90-year cycle. For 45 years, the energy continues to increase and then the receding begins. 45 years, the sun begins very old. During later 25 years, the earth is stuck with earthquakes. Earthquakes are related to this 90 year cycle. At the end of 90th year, the sun again starts to become youth. This is, there are such immense changes happening on the sun that it is also natural for earth to be shaking. When a body as huge as earth becomes shaken by earthquakes because of the changes on the sun, how can a small body of man remain unaffected? This is the question astrologers have been asking. They say it is possible for the body of the man to remain unaffected. Children that are born during the 45 years when sun is growing in its youthful phase are wonderfully healthy as compared to the children that are born during the 45 years when sun is growing old, their age, their health is not as sound.
the condition of the children born during the period when sun is on the downward path is like that of a ship that has to travel east when the winds are blowing west. A great deal of physical effort is needed to move the ship. The sails do not work, so the helmsman has to work harder. It is like swimming against the current. The sun is the vital energy source for the solar, for the entire solar family. So whenever the sun is on the decline, whosoever is youthful must swim against the current. He has to undergo a great strain. And whenever the sun is on incline, the entire solar system is filled with the energy and is moving towards its peak. Whoever is born then is in a ship that is sailing in the direction of the wind. No effort is needed. Neither the oars nor the rudders have to be moved. The sails have only to be opened and ship will continue to move with the winds. During this period, the least number of diseases are prevalent on earth and when the sun is on the decline, we get maximum number of diseases. So for 45 years on earth, there is an increase in number of diseases and then for the next 45 years, there will be a decrease in diseases and so on. The river Niles Historical record of 4,000 years shows that there is an increased amount of water flowing in it during the 45 years when sun is in its youth. Whenever the sun is on the decline, the water level in the Nile drops and its current also becomes less strong and more sluggish. Remember, man is not an island. He is a whole unity. Not even the best watches that man has made tell the time as accurately as the earth does. It makes 23 hours and 56 minutes for earth to make one revolution around its axis. On the basis of this time period, we have devised a day of 24 hours. And so far the earth has never been known to take one second more or less to complete its revolution. But the reason is that we have not had any totally accurate means by which to study this phenomenon, so we have only made rough estimates and when the sun cycle of 90 years is completed it readjusts for a new cycle the earth's clock is shaken at the time when the sun experiences increased radioactivity during its 11th year cycle then to the earth's clock is disturbed Whenever the earth comes under the influence of such external forces, its inner rhythm is disturbed. Any new cosmic influence like a star, a meteor or a comet passes near the earth also disturbs it. On a cosmic scale, things very far in the sky are really very near because everything is interconnected in an invisible way that we cannot see but happens. However, the ability of our language to express this phenomenon is very weak. Because when we say that a star has come a little nearer to our sun, we think about this in ordinary sense of one person coming closer to another. Yet these distances are very great. 
even a slight change in the distance between the cosmic object and the axis of the earth is disturbed. Although we may not at all be aware of it, to disturb the earth a great force is required. For even in even one inch shift in the earth, powerful cosmic bodies are required to pass near its orbit. When these great cosmic bodies pass near the earth, they also pass near earth. When earth is shaken, when earth is shaken, it is not possible that trees growing on it are not shaken. It is not possible that human beings living and walking on, on it is not shaken. No, it's not so. Everything is shaken. But the shaking is very minute. The man has no instrument to measure it. Now, however, we have such sensitive electronic instruments that a vibration of a thousandth of a second duration can also be measured. But the vibration of the human being still cannot be measured. We have so far not made any instrument to measure this way. Man is a very subtle creature and it is necessary for him to be that way. Otherwise, it would be very difficult for him to live on the earth. If he was able to experience and be aware of the influence of the surrounding forces that act upon, his, that act upon him 24 hours a day, he would not be able to live. We are only able to live because we are not aware of everything that is happening around us. There is an, another law as well. This law is that we cannot be aware of the influences either above or below a certain limit. The range of our experience is limited. For example, we measure the body's temperature as being between 98 degrees at the lowest point and 110 degrees at the highest point. This shows we are living between these 12 degrees. If the temperature drops below 98 degrees, we will die. And if the temperature shoots shoots up above 110 degrees, we will also die. But do you think that temperature range of the universe is limited to just 12 degrees? Man lives within that limited range of 12 degrees. Outside of this range, he will die. Man lives in a sort of balance. He has to fluctuate between 98 and 110 degrees. Similarly, there is a balance for everything. I am speaking to you and you can hear me. If I speak in a very low tone, a point will come where you will not be able to hear me at all. This you can understand. But you will not be able to imagine that there is a higher point of audibility beyond which you cannot hear at all. It will be difficult to imagine that a louder noise can also be audible. Scientists say that we have a certain range of hearing and that we, can, we cannot hear anything below or above that range. All around us, great thundering noises are occurring, but we cannot hear them. If a star disintegrates or a new planet is born, thunderous, thundering noise are created around the earth. If we were able to hear them, then at the very moment, we would become deaf, but we are protected. 
because our ears cannot hear them. We cannot hear below a certain decibels and also we cannot hear beyond a certain decibel. We can only hear within a certain range. There are even limits to smelling. The senses of all human beings operate within a particular range. For example, as dog is able to smell much more than you can. Its range of smell is wider. A dog can smell what we cannot, what we are not able to hear, a horse can hear. Horse sense of hearing and his smell is much sharper. A horse can smell the approach of a lion from a distance of one and a half mile. It will suddenly stop and we will not be able to understand why. It senses the smell of a very powerful. If you had such a strong sense of smell, that you could experience the smells pervading surrounding you, you would go mad. A human being is close within a sort of capsule. He has boundaries. When you switch on your radio, you can hear to, you can listen to many stations. But do you think that the music begins only when the radio is switched on? The radioactive waves of music and speech are continuously flowing in the air. Constantly these sound waves are being thrown in the cosmos. Whether you switch, your, switch on your radio or not, but you can only hear them when the radio is switched on. In this very room, the radio waves of all the broadcasting stations of the world are continuously flowing. But you can only hear them when you switch on your radio set or that particular channel. Those radio waves are there even when your radio is not switched on, but you cannot hear them. In this world, many sounds are passing by around us. There is a great tumult, but we are not able to hear it. But we cannot escape being affected by it. Although we are not able to hear it, we are influenced by all these noises in every nerve, in every heartbeat, in every muscle, these noises are working in us unnoticed. These smells we are not able to recognize also affect us. If those smells bring them from, if those smells bring with them some disease, you will certainly capture those diseases. Your awareness or recognition of something is not necessary in order for it to exist. Astrology says that there are energy fields around us which go on influencing us continuously. As soon as a child is born, it is subject to all the influences of the world. In the language of science, we can describe birth as a process of exposure. It is just as though we expose a film in a camera. You press the exposure button of the camera and within a split of a second, the lens window opens and closes. And whosoever was in front of the camera is immediately registered on the film. The film is exposed without affecting the previous exposure. The film has captured the image of the scene forever. Similarly, when a child is conceived in mother's womb, this is the first exposure for the child. 
On the day the child is born, there is a second exposure. These two exposures are registered upon the sensitive mind of the child as if on the film. The world as it is at that moment is imprinted on the child. So there is an empathy in the child for the world as it is at that moment. You will be surprised to know that 90% of the children are born at night. Ordinarily, in accordance with mathematical probability, the percentage of births would be same for nights as for day. There might be a fluctuation of 4 to 5 percent here and there, but why should 90 percent be born during the night? 10 percent of the births at the most occur during the day. There must be a reason for it. There are many reasons for it. Let me explain. When a child is born at the night, the first exposure of the world upon its mind is not of the light but of darkness. Only by way of illustration, I am telling you that first impression upon the mind of the child is that of darkness. The sun is absent, the energy is absent, all around the world is sleeping, Nothing is actually awake. This is the first impact of the child. Recall when we were born. I was born near about 4 o'clock in the evening. If we were to ask Buddha or Mahabir about the reason for this, they would say that most souls take birth at night because they are sleeping when they are born. These souls cannot choose the moment of their birth. There are hundreds of other reasons, but this is important that most people are asleep. They are in darkness and inactivity. Whosoever is born after sunrise will be born with energy. At sunset, in the darkness of the night, only sleeping beings take birth. The birth that takes place at the time of the rising of the sun will be birth under the influence of the energy. The birth that takes place after sunset under the cover of darkness will be a birth under the influence of sleep. The exposures will differ for a film exposed at night then one exposed during the day. It is necessary to understand this point about exposure more clearly because astrology is very deeply related. Scientists who are conducting research on the subject of birth exposure say that there is a happening of the utmost importance. That exposure will follow you throughout your life. When a chick is born to a hen, it immediately starts running after the hen. We say that it is running after the mother, but scientists say that it has nothing to do with the mother, that it is only a question of exposure and imprinting. Scientists have now conducted hundreds of experiments. One experiment was on the chicks about to be born. The chicks' beak were emerged from the eggs and just then the hen was removed from the scene and instead a balloon was placed in front of the chicks. When the chicks opened their eyes, they saw the balloon. You will be surprised to know that the chicks loved the balloon as if it was their mother. Wherever the balloon moved in the air, they would run after this. They did not care for the mother, wherever she might be, but they became surprisingly sensitive towards the balloon. When the chick becomes tired, 
it will go and sit by the side of the balloon. They would try to love the balloon. They would try to peck at the balloon, not at the mother. There was a scientist called Conrad Lawrence who has done a great deal of work in this connection. He says that the first moment of exposure is the most important. The chick becomes immediately related to the mother because of that first exposure. It runs after the mother only because she was available to it first. Now some experiments are being conducted. Male children who are not brought up in the presence of the mother are not capable of loving any woman. There has been no proper exposure. The image of a woman has not been properly imprinted on such a child's mind. If homosexuality is increasing in the West, one fundamental reason is an insufficient exposure to one of the parents. Heterosexual love, love between opposite sexes, is becoming less and less in the West and love between members of same sex is increasing. Although this is an unnatural happening, it is bound to be there. Sexual attraction between a man and a woman is also conditioned in another way. To whom a child will be first exposed is a matter that should be considered. A woman will not be happy her whole life if a baby girl, she was first exposed to the mother. Her exposure should be to a man. The first impact of the mind of a girl should be of her father. Only then she will be capable of loving a man fully. If man also surpasses a woman, it is because boys and the girls are both first exposed to and brought up by the mother. The exposure of the boy is correct. But that of a girl is not. So long as a baby girl first exposure is not to her father, it will not be possible for her to become equal to a man. Neither through politics, nor through employment, nor through economic independence can she become equal. Because from a psychological perspective, the weakness in the personality of the girl remains. No civilization has so far been able to overcome this weakness. If a small balloon can exert so much influence on a chicken, if it can enter so indelibly into the mind, astrology suggests that whosoever surrounds us, the whole universe enters into our consciousness at that moment of exposure at the birth when mental film is exposed to the world. This determines your sympathies and antipathies for your entire life. All the constellations that are encircling the earth at that moment also in a very deep way imprint their influences on newly born consciousness. The constellations are in certain positions. The basic significance of these constellations lie in the influence of their radioactivity falling upon the earth at the moment of the birth. Now scientists believe that every celestial body has its own unique radioactivity. The planet Venus throws out its rays which are tranquil, whereas the moon has quite a different type of radio waves. 
the radio waves that reaches from Jupiter are different from those that reaches from Sun. The reason for the difference is that each planet had a different combination of gaseous layers circling it. And from each planet a different combination of rays reach towards the Earth. And when a child is born, whatever constellation, the stars, planet or different super suns are encircling the horizon, all enter deep within the mind of the child at the time of its exposure. The cosmic situation at that moment, with all its weaknesses, its strengths and capabilities, influence the child for his entire life. It is like knowing the exact effect of what would happen when an atom bomb explodes emits a populated area like Hiroshima. Before the atom bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, it was only known that hundreds of thousands of people will die, but it was not known that, would, that it would affect the future generation and everything else as well. For those who died in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, it was just a matter of one moment. But the trees that remained behind, the animals, the birds, the fish and the human beings that remained behind were all permanently affected in one unknown manner. The total effect of this will be known only after about 10 generations passed because deeper radioactive forces are still at work. When in 1984 I went to Japan, that is in the city of Osaka, one of our suppliers, he mentioned the effect of that was in 1985. He would have been 60 years of age. He said that effect of that radioactive forces that are still continuing. He has a problem. When we ask him to eat with us, he said he cannot eat all kinds of food. Whatsoever he eats, he cannot digest. So it has affected his digestive system and immediately he gets diarrhea. A woman sur surviving had her ovaries affected by radioactivity. Now these ovaries are incapable of producing normal children, such as they would have done before they were affected by the radioactivity. A child born of these ovaries could be lame or blind. It could have four or even eight eyes. It could be anything one cannot see. Its brain may be diseased or it may have a genius such as has never been born before. We are not certain what it will be like. We know only one thing for certain that it is that it will not be like an ordinary normal human being. If the power of an atomic bomb, which is comparatively not a very great power, can cause such great harm to life on earth, then you can begin to imagine the power of the sun. It is as if millions of atom bombs are bursting on it simultaneously. In Hiroshima and Nagasaki, one atom bomb killed 120,000 human beings. In comparison, you can imagine how many radioactivity exists on the sun. The sun has been heating the earth for 4 billion years 
the scientists say that there is no possibility for its beginning to grow cool for millions of years. Each day it gives out tremendous heat to the earth and that too from a distance of almost 100 million miles. Whatever happened in Hiroshima only affected the radius of up to 10 miles. Whereas the sun has been giving us heat from a distance of 100 million miles and for so long it is still not exhausted. But compared with other suns in the universe, our sun is just a tiny star. The stars that we see in the sky are much bigger than our sun and each one of them has its own individual radiation which is flowing towards us.